Hi there, so let's move to the second and last tutorial of this turbulence lecture. So this one is a 3D tutorial, okay, and in this one we'll go in, this is a long one, we already have solutions, I'm going to just briefly show you, but here we're going to cover runs, you run some less, and remember the first tutorial when we were mapping solutions, and we're going to use map to uh, mapping to, to to map solution from one to the other case. So basically this is our domain geometry. These are our working conditions, okay? And just to show you, we'll also show you this in during the theory, there are some values here. So this is a nice validation case. Also you can work it out, okay? And we're going to run using simple phone and pimple phone, okay? Uh, using runs and less model, everything is preset up, functional, yes, and everything. So just to remind you to set up the turbulence models, it's always a moment in transport, and to set up less, it's exactly the same. Instead of using here RAS, put, put less, and then here choose the turbulence model. As I say, turbulence model is a wide, very wide field, and explaining everything in one hour, it's very difficult. I didn't talk much about that, but in turbulence, when it comes to less, there are many turbulence models. In this case, we're using this as Masgorinsky with these default options. Remember that also what functions you need to define and just a reminder of the different approaches. You can use wall functions also with the simulations, okay? But in less, you are not solving for K or omega, you are only solving for NUT. Depending on the also depending on the turbulence model that you are using in the formulation. So when we run when running with the less with the runs case, okay, we are going to set up boundary conditions like this, and we're going to compute initial values using this correlation where you're going to use the k omega st with these initial estimates. Okay, so you know how to compute it. There is no problem. Also. Is equal to SV skin, SV solution. There we have the, the numerics. Something important that for less, you should run with CFL number below one. Okay, probably a top, 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 top value will be two, but let's say to get accurate results 0.9. Instead for the Uran simulation, okay, simulation, Uran is runs on a steady, runs is a steady. So for the Uran, you can go as high of, of, as 10, but also we're going to, to run the, the steady. Okay, so we have everything there, okay. So as you go here, turbulence square cylinder, see that you have different folders. So these two cases are less simulation, using a different model. And here we have runs and all runs. These are previous solutions, okay, it doesn't matter. So let's go into the runs folders, okay? So this is the steady simulation. And as you go runs, okay, then you have the classical scripts, okay? So see that you have the run mesh. So let's generate the mesh, okay? just to take a look and also see that you have your standard boundary conditions so say u p k omega nut because we are using k omega if you want to use something else it's up to you the physical properties also we set that so see that if you put the, this esti the initial estimate you will be able to compute these values okay this this is not black magic okay these are computed using our correlations then omega see that here you have the note K okay, the omega wall function, K wall function, then the set, you know, left is an inlet, the right will be the outlet, zero grading. I, you, these are for periodic boundary conditions, okay? Those are constraints as well. And the standard setup. For NUT, see that we have calculated, okay, here, uh, I put zero grading, but you, ca you can use zero grading, but it would be better to use calculated in inlets and outlet. And that's all, okay? You set up, this is very important, set up the, the boundary condition. And if you want, you can go back to the flat plate and run, well, I show you the figures. If you use the wrong boundary conditions, wrong values, you are going to get different results, okay? You are going to convert to a solution, but it's not the right solution, okay? So that's all that you need to do. So now you go to system, so, and here you have your control did. So remember, first we run simple form, but look at that, we have all the standard function objects, okay? So this is my signature here, minimum and maximum values, forces, some probes, and then the Y plus value, okay? And then there are some additional stuff. You can also compute average and steady solutions. There is no problem. So see that here where it's starting to compute average 
after 200 iterations. Q criterion, I will show you this. This is to, to visualize the vertical structures and see that now here, I'm saving the wall shear stresses using the function object. I'm not using a posteriori, okay? And as you go to FVSkin, the standard SVSkin, in this case, the steady state, a standard numerics that we talk about. Remember that for when it comes for, for turbulence quantities, we can use a win. So here we're using a win, but it's the one you, you can go for the fully uh, for, 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 for the fully linear win that is second order accurate. But tor for turbulence quantities, it's okay to use a win. What is important that your moment on this one, the divergence of view, it has to be second order accurate, okay, at least. So this is a standard setup. This is a very good quality mesh. So see that I'm staying with the limited one. And just to remind you that as you run check mesh, check mesh, you have here, and it's a perfect, basically a perfect mesh. And probably I didn't mention anything about this entry here. So this entry is related how you compute the Y plus at the walls for the turbulence models that are Y plus insensitive, okay? So if you are using any other turbulence model that is not Y plus insensitive, you need to put this. This is just for the, and and to be clear, just for the K, K omega models that you need to put this entry, okay? You have it there. So it's just the Y plus distribution. And as you go FV solution, see that the standard you knows linear solver. So see, remember that it's difficult to say which one is the best one. So in this case, we're using multigrid, but probably will be better PCG. Okay, different options here for K and Omega, how you resolve those equations and see that now simple. I always recommend go for the consistent, consistent is on. Okay, so you can put on or true. Okay, that is, that is equivalent. And on the relaxation factors. Okay, so remember that you have in this slides also we talk about that, that the simple you can use larger on the relax, uh, on the relaxing factor. But be, be very careful also we we saw in the, in the exercise and some tutorials that it is very important not to adjust this uh on the relaxation because there are problem dependent so sometimes sometimes might happen that your simulation mysteriously crash especially in a, a steady simulation so likely related to on the relaxation so you need to reduce okay so remember this value is bounded between zero and one closer to zero is is probably is too large so it's better to reduce it okay if sorry closer to one is too large so it's better to reduce it okay so i like to use values of 0 0.7 for fields and equations but in this case 0 0.9 i know it works okay so that is all the case, case setup so as you see pretty much standard as you go here now in in constant poly mesh you will see now name and patch, 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 wall and cyclic boundary conditions. So this one is computed using create patch dictionary. Okay, so you could create patch here. Okay, I did it. Well, I ha I computed. Ba -ba 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 Let me see. Runs. Okay, okay block. Okay, now it's computed di directly in block mesh. Now, as you go into block mesh, in this case. In the definition, it's already cyclic and uh, open form will automatically you know, generate this boundary. But also, you can use create patch to, to create this one, but it's just a transformation. It's not a big deal there. So, this is the case, and let's, let's run it. Okay, so a, a couple of iterations. So, when you see this folder, sold 2000 means that you have the solution there. So, let's look at the steps. So, the mesh and then we have the solver. And remember that I mentioned also renumber mesh is very important. So see that now we're consistently use renumber mesh in every case. No, this is just to accelerate the convergence of the linear solver, at least during the first iterations. Then run simple form, reconstruct the solution. And here is a, a posteriori function argument, but also you can put it online here in, in your control dictionary. Okay, so I will run a couple of iterations, then I'm going to open this file, okay? So see that also you will see this directory. This is it's going to just transfer now the, 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 the solution from there to 2000 and then you, you can post process. Okay, so let's run a couple of iterations. Mm -mm -mm. solver. So see that running in parallel, decomposing, and that's all. You have the standard output, so minimum and maximum, K, omega, 
remember that these quantities are bound in k and omega because your tolerant viscosity is positive so you, you at one point you see tolerant viscosity negative that might be a problem so it might happen but it have to be a very small value but that is a, a positive value okay so you need to check everything below below values of velocity and eh, everything so this convergence uh, this will be a very smooth convergence okay so you can also open and let me launch Python plot washer or if Python plot washer log solver and let's monitor also the the, the residuals that like this this is what people likes to see but honestly do not rely always on this can be very misleading and we talk about this in model 6 so see that so far is a nice convergence rate okay everything going down nicely but one thing that i need to point out look at that we're running okay using we're using an steady solver and i want to point out okay that this solution is not an steady solution okay so let me go here at the beginning okay and just to point out that this is a truly unsteady physics okay so basically i'm using the wrong solver in the in in, in, in the physics of interest so i'm going to get a solution but that solution the results are, are very questionable okay but look at that that actual solution this is the output of these simulations is something like this so see that we're running an steady solver okay but basically what we're doing remember that you can run a steady solver get an initial solution then you can map that solution to an on a steady solver run that solution and then you have that solution there and then we can switch to the less model okay so this is what we're going to do okay so we did it already during the first week in the first tutorial so i'm going to stop here and let me do okay i'm going to stop this simulation and let me go sh run set final solution okay so we have a, a a solution there i set the solution and let's visualize this results okay so part of you recall that when you have the part of your folder there you have some steps there that you can open so let's see i don't recall okay load state let me go here let's see what we have in s1 okay let me put it there and actually let me go like this let me s okay save state okay let me save this one so see that this is the solution that we have a steady solver in a truly on steady physics so you have a solution but Mm, this is not right okay but what is important that we have an initial field it doesn't mean it doesn't matter if it is garbage it's far from the actual solution but see that this is much better than starting from a fully uniform solution okay because we have seen that also in the, in the first tutorial it will take a really long time to unset that instability so see that here we have a really good starting point one thing also look at that what we're visualizing here is something called the q criterion so that q criterion in my function objects is you go here okay you have it here so you can use it to visualize vertical structures only in 3d in 2d you will use uh, vorticity so is the to visualize this one is just a structure phases so here you see that we have the contour q criterion and use uh, uh, this to visualize the vertical structures q criterion is a positive value okay this va uh, q criterion can go from very large negative values to very large positive so it is a positive value and then you need to pay to play around with the the, the actual value okay so usually i like to start with 10,000. so see that the larger this value is the less structures you are going to see so you start with 10,000. if you don't see on anything you reduce it to a thousand okay see that you're starting to see some vertical structures there and then let me reduce it to one okay it was intense so you put it a very low value and see that you see more structure so the steady solver is capturing this so it makes no sense using a steady solver in a strongly unsteady physics but 
what we were thinking in is just run this steady solver that you can run really fast use this solution as a starting point for the on a steady solver and then let the on steady run and you are going to capture the whole transient okay so now this solution in the urans it is coming from a steady solution that we're using as initial guess so let's do that 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 next step okay so i hope you you recall this one how to compute the the, the, the q criterion okay so you save it in open phone and then you plot it as an isosurface I would check something else because there, there was another script there, another state. So let me see what was that state here. So state two. And let me do like this. So I recommend you to do like this and then you save it automatically. Uh, okay, so that one is not working. Okay, it's not a big deal. So just ta, 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 part of you so the s1 rename is q criterion okay so you know that you're going to visualize that so our next step will be this solution we're going to map that solution into a new case you can map to different meshes by the way you can map to a finer mesh but for the moment, I will use the same mesh, nothing changed. But remember that you can do it like this, run it steady using a very coarse mesh. So you know that you get a fast outcome, you get some, some, some results, and then you map that into a finer mesh on a steady. Okay, so that we have it here in, in urans. So let's go to urans. So boundary conditions, the setup, it is exactly the same. I haven't changed anything. The only thing that will change is you go now into control D and SV skin, SV solution. See that SV skin now is time dependent. And also I don't have the bounded keyword here that remember that is using for a state is re recommended to put it now to reduce the errors. But now I switch fully on a steady. This you check in control D, you will see that now you set up the entry and all the time step. Here I have access to the maximum current. So see that I'm going for a very large current. And remember, if you are going for a very large current, like 20, you should use SUC cycling. Okay, do not use P, uh, so use PIMPEL. Okay, so as you check here, you will see the standard entries. But see that now I go here, I enable the SUC cycling here. So see that I'm putting here 20 outer correctors, the standard 2-1, as I recommend, but probably I recommend it I recommend it three, okay? But in this case, two is okay because the, me the mesh is perfect. And see that 20 outer correctors, but you put this residual control. So this will iterate and usually will stop like in two or three iterations. And see that also I am under relaxing consistent formulation, that's all. Okay, so let's run this case. So just to show you, so first we generate the mesh. As I say, we're going to use the same mesh, but you can have different meshes. There is no problem. And now the next step consists in mapping the solution. So see that you have this script here. Okay, remember that all these scripts are human readable, and I try to put some, some descriptive names so you can understand what they're doing. So as you open this one, you see here the steps to do the mapping of the solution, okay? So in this case, we need to map the solution that we have in runs, okay? So you will see the beginning of this script because probably you can go right ahead and, and, and jump into this directory and you don't have the solution in URANs. So basically here, it is extracting a solution that we already have, then move to this directory Okay, you need to have the mesh, and here is where you map the solution. So I will do it because I already know that I have this solution. So see that map fields, this is this, the, the source directory, same domain, no function object, use this method, and map the latest time. So if you put it here, see that it's telling you source runs, target or runs the one that you are right now and then you are mapping this time and that's all we map the solutions 
By the way, also at this point, I recommend you to work binary. You see that now this case is working binary, okay? Since it starts to become large, so we're working binary, and that's all. So you, I can open Pada for now, and you will see that we have an actual solution there. Okay, so let me go here. See that this is my velocity field, and see that this is a much, much better solution than a uniform field. So now what, what, what I'm going to do is run the simulation and starting from this map solution. So SH run solver, and again, I'm not going to run the whole stuff because it's time consuming. You know? I'm just going to run a few time steps. But see, decompose, renumber mesh, and now we're running fully on a steady. Okay, and see that at the beginning, this is your white plus, it's reporting the white plus. But also in post processing, you're going to have all your function objects, the white plus, you can see now it is reporting this at, at the same saving frequency that you have so my saving frequency here it is every 0.25 seconds so every 0.25 you are going to have a report here but also that field it is it, it, it is available to visualize now now we're going to see it. okay let's wait a little bit so see that at the beginning see that five iterations it will run i put it 20 but it conversion five it will stop the subcycling, the, 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 exter the outer loop, and move to the next time step. And it will keep doing that. Okay, so see that it is scaling the CFL number, so at the beginning it is slow, and then it will keep increasing on t until reaching the maximum that I put, it was 20 or the maximum time. But this is how you proceed, okay? So actually, the, 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 this case is, time consuming so let's do I will do so I will let it run and remember that we have salt in there but also you can use this script now to set final solution so basically this is will will move some files okay okay uh, let me do CPU okay so we have the solution now pre-computed and let's post process that that solution Okay, and uh, while the solver is running. So in part of, see that in part of it, you have also some scripts. So let me launch part of one. So I will open those uh, one state, okay? So the Q criterion to show you. So you know that the Q criterion is being computed already as a function object. And let me put here like this. Okay, so I'll see that is a little bit slow. So in this case, let me save it also for you here. So see that in this case, a Q criterion is showing you this. Okay, so now this is fully on a steady. These are 10 seconds of simulation that what we have. See that now you have the vortex shading, okay? So you can go here, you can change you know, the value to one or it's up to you. See that you capture more structures, okay? So if you save all your times, then you can do the, the animation you now like in this slide. So basically this is what we're seeing there, okay? So see that your Q criterion and let me okay we'll extract this one okay then you have this square in this square you all can also access what shared stresses and white plus so remember that these are also function objects and let me plot white plus okay so remember white plus is very important in terms of modeling and for us it should be uh, uh okay so here we have instantaneous value okay so see that is something between four and 30, okay? So this is 10, you see these values what, that were very in, in, the, in the buffer boundary layer, okay? The boundary, the, the region that we don't want to resolve, okay? So this is telling you that it might be a good idea to have a finer mesh. However, remember that we're using the K omega ST model, that this model, it works very well in all regions of the boundary layer. But if you can avoid this region, you no, know, the one between uh, of Y plus value between 10 and 30, it, it is much better, okay? But you have the Y plus there and, 
and so on okay so see that this case is running smoothly let me stop it here okay nothing else so now imagine that we run this case and you have this final time okay so now this is the next step, okay? This is the, the run, so see that the run simulation, it, it is <clears throat> somehow, no, by using this this, this procedure, the, the, the run average, it, it is removing the instantaneous fluctuations. In, instead, in these less models, those instantaneous fluctuations, they are solved, okay? So there is another method similar, no? but now this method will let solve that one. So what we're going to do now that we have the solution, let's map the solution here and let's launch a less simulation. And I want to show you something. This is my advice. If you want to launch less simulations, proceed as, as we have done. At least do a runs or urban simulation. In the runs or urban simulation, check your mesh quality, check your Y plus value, check that everything makes sense. When you are sure that it's okay, map that solution to the less and then launch a fully on a steady, okay? So here, let's move to this folder, okay? Do you have two folders, different different um, to, uh, less turbulence models? Let's go to this Maskorinsky. Okay, probably the most widely diffused, not necessarily the best less model. So as you go into less, again, we're going to do the map and everything, okay? We're going to use the same mesh. I want to point out that in this folder, see that you have different meshes, okay? So it's, you have this one and you can check mapping to different meshes, okay? But let's do, let, let's press it in the same way. So let me do the mesh. Okay, I think it, it will do the same mesh. So we have, so yeah, it is the same mesh. And now we can map the solution. So see that you have many, many scripts there. And the one that I want to use to map solution, it will be run solver mapping this one. So see that you have these two, run solver mapping urn. So you will map from the urn or you can map from the, from the run. So if you open this one, see that it's going to map here. So this is the key st step and then it will run the simulation, okay? So let me show you the mapping because I already know that that folder exists. So see that it's mapping and then you have all this. Remember that I mentioned also that it's like when you map solution, it's going to map everything that you have in the other directory. So see that it's mapping you mean you prime all these quantities that I don't want to have it in my zero folder. So see that then this step here, the next step is just canceling those files. Okay, I don't want those files. I just just want up newt what uh, what not stress yes because I use it for something and the mean values that's all. So do some cleaning, but I recommend you just to keep the 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 primitive files. Okay, so in this case. Let me erase everything that I don't need. So your clean case, less case should be, here you have it. Okay, so this is the less, let me erase this one, you, you need it. You should have U and P, we know U and P are velocity and pressure, but this one, this is the turbulent viscosity. It's still in less, you are computing that. And for less, you see that the setup is very easy. You, you only need to give newt, that's all. You need to give K omega, at least for this formulation, this Maskorinsky. For the other formulation, you need to give K, okay? But it's much easier than setting a run. So if you go into newt, it's just this, that's all. You put everything, zero gradient, zero gradient, okay? your setup and then at the walls use this one so this is a continuous wall function you now a wall function and y plus insensitive wall function you put it there and that's all you are ready to go so this is what i did we interpolated ump so these are binary files actually they are not human readable but this file also i interpolated the previous solution but i kept the solutions that they were, the, the, the boundary conditions that were already defined there. Okay, uh, my mistake that I put it there, but see that is. Okay, so just to show you as well, let me go VI zero. I know I don't want to talk about VI's, you know what is that? Okay, if you don't know, don't care. 
and let me check for type. So see that the type that, that you define in your original file, you keep it, but then you interpolate all the values in that patches. That those values that you are interpolating, they are coming from the runs simulation. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. All right. Let me do it like this. Okay. Okay, I make it. made the mistake to try to open it there, but in any case. So see that we interpolated and now we can run the simulation. Okay, so let me run that script. Who was this one? Solver mapping. Okay, so it's mapping. Okay. So we see that it's very easy, this setup. Nothing new, just the NUT, turbulent viscosity is you go to constant. Nothing new, the only difference is that you have here the new turbulence model. It's my Zgodinsky. And I want to point out that now we need to go into system because, okay, as you can imagine, there are new scenes, okay, in this. So in SB skin, Remember, when it comes to less, you want to keep the numerical diffusion to the minimum. Okay, so this is very important. It's not like in RANS that you can go, you, you can play your way around with, with a wind and for the turbulent quantity here. No, you want high accuracy. So see that this is the setup I recommend for our RANS. Okay, how you have it like, like this. Okay, so this implies that you get good, you need good measures, good quality, and also small CFL numbers. Okay, so see that. This this one is is more is less accurate than the linear. The most ac accurate is, is linear, but it's more stable. Okay, so it is more accurate than linear upwind, but less accurate than this. It's, it's a way in between. Which, by the way, I don't recommend you to use linear upwind in less. Okay, it is too diffusive. Avoid this. You need to use linear or linear upwind, or there is something else something else called LUST. And that's all this setup. Okay, so you need uh, still you need to define this SV solution standard setup, and then see that we're using again the su the sub cycling here and on the relaxing. Okay, so see that there is no difference in the less. The less the important thing that you need good quality measures. You need a good numerics, a, a good mean. I mean an accurate numerics. And that's all. And then wait a long time because these simulations you need to let it iterate a lot. And see this one is, is running already and see that it reached in control did I think uh, I define now maximum CF current number. So here is important keep your current number about one. So see that it's running computing everything everything seems okay. And that's all. You need to let it run a long time. So as you want to have this animation, these are 20 seconds of simulation, by the way. I think it's something in four cores. It is like six hours in four cores, at least in the in the notebook that, that I am running. Okay. So again, in this case, you have salt temp folder. There you have a solution. So let's look at that solution. Okay. So I will do like this and copy there with that, and then I will open Parafo. Okay. Okay. So the solver is already running, and this is how you set up cases. So you see your workflow for run simulation for less simulations, run at runs or U runs, map the solution, then launch your solution. But also before running check that everything makes sense check your y plus and everything because you need you might need you might need to do some readjustment to get a better mesh to to get the right y plus value this end applies for u runs in u runs it's better to run first a run simulation and then map solution and launch the the u runs okay so let me open here i will open that we have an state here so we have many stuff here that I don't want to go in detail because it, it is advanced since now some criterions to check the, the quality of the mesh. So you can open there and take a look at that, what is going on, but I will open just the Q criterion. So 
So if you want to understand the, the, those other advanced scripts, I recommend you to go to the lectures, to my link, the lectures now, and read all everything about less and post-processing, okay? Because those are some additional topics. Uh, so, uh, bam, 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 why do I here? So refresh, okay, the compose case. Okay, let's see what is what do I have here? So <clears throat> So contrary to, to, to you what you might think that less simulation is something you know that for really really advanced clever people that scientists crazy scientists are doing it's very easy as you see the only thing is that you need good quality meshes okay ah, a lot of pa patience because they these are long simulations that there is nothing to do here is, again people are oh, but i need a faster solution okay i can give you a faster solution but, but whatever i'm going to give you it is garbage okay so do not sacrifice computing time over solution accuracy uh, okay so boom 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 Mm -mm -mm. Okay, it's a little bit slow, so I'm running all this. Well, I think let me let let me stop the simulation. I think so. Let me go here. Let, let me stop the simulation. It's running. You got any up uh, the point? But see that relatively fast. It arrived to zero point twenty one seconds. Okay, let me cancel folder zero, and now I will launch Paraphon. And now let's look at, at the folder ten where we have a pre-computed solution, okay? So in this case, uh, 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 but a phone. okay, let me use the built-in option. Uh, uh, what is this error? Uh, I don't know. Okay, okay, I got, yeah, I know what is the problem there. So see that now this is a pre-compute co uh, solution, which by the way, oh, use a part of built-in. I, I, I remember the error, or not the error, it's just a warning. So let me go here, Q criterion. Okay, so you select your file in your current case. I just put dot backslash and this is it so see that after 10 seconds so getting this with runs you are not going to get it okay Pro even as you get super fine meshes in runs you are not going to get this because in runs you are averaging everything so you are removing all those fluctuations you are just getting the mean scales the large largest scale which are important but now when you move to less to move to less in less you get mean scales larger scale but also you resolve fluctuations okay and what you resolve in the fluctuations depends on, on the mesh size so the smaller the mesh the more the more scales that you are going to to resolve okay so you have it here and for instance let me go at the wall and you can plot there your y plus as you want and you can check so see that again the, the, this mesh uh, it is there it, it might be better to have something better so, something something finer and that finer and actually just to show you the mesh that this is a very coarse mesh okay and even though that the mesh squares were getting the results that you see in the table are coming from here okay so you can do all your own benchmarking you will see that the results make sense but it might be better just to get a finer mesh so see that this is what what you are resolving at the wall okay so you are using wall functions and this is what i told you when you have masses massive separation using wall functions is, is it's not recommended it's better to to go wall resolving so here in this case what you will need to know and this is your actual solution so remember what you will need to know is just to refine the mesh closer to the cylinder here so probably you will need to add like six or ten layers to reduce that y plus to values around four or five okay but that will imply that your time step will become even much smaller okay because 
you're going to have finer cells there. Okay, so this is how how you post process the how you run and post process uh, the simulations. Remember, always compute forces and stuff like that. So here in post processing, you have everything. Now you have forces, minimum, maximum values. You have probes. And here in Y plus now is it is reporting. Besides, now that you can visualize this field, in every time that that you save that solution is telling you the minimum, maximum, and average value. See that see that your average value is about 14, which is not the best one. But okay, we're using this wall function now. Let me go back. That this wall function now is a Y plus insensitive, but it is better to be or fully well resolving or fully wall modeling, let's avoid avoid the buffer layer. Okay, so the other case that you have here is using this other model, okay? So it's pretty much the same, but as you open here, is another less model called K equation. So it, it solves one equation. So the Smas-Gorinsky, it is kind of a, a, a model where you, you don't solve an equation, okay? It's an empirical model, let's say. In this one, you are solving one equation, and that equation is k, the same as the, in k omega. So you need to give boundary conditions for that. So for NUT, it is the same. If you open k, the boundary condition, it will be exactly the same as we did it for the k omega, okay? So I have to, another advice, when it comes to, well, when it comes to runs or runs, go for k omega ST. When it comes to less, I recommend you to go for, for this model, okay? I don't wanna go, I don't want to go into details, probably in the Q&A session we can address that, but this model is much better than the Smaskorinsky, okay? It gives you most, more information, it, it is more reliable. It will be a little bit more expensive, okay? Or a little bit, it will be more expensive, but it's a much better so, uh, model. Remember, as you are solving a new equation, an additional equation you need to define here, okay? That's all. So you have your, your setup there, but do use, I recommend you to use this one. So again, something that you can do is that you can run a smash Gorinsky and then you can map this solution here and you can compare. Okay, so usually I do like that though. So you run, you get this smash Gorinsky. This smash Gorinsky have many limitations. Okay, so I know in this case it doesn't perform very well. So I got a solution and then that solution you can map it here and then you keep running on that. So do that or run bus cases and do your comparison, compare forces and everything. Okay, so that's all for this case. Thank you for your attention. Okay, this is also all for turbulence modeling. This is the most important part in CFD. In the next model, we, we in the next lectures we move and we cover some other some other models, but everything is going to depend from now on in turbulence. So thank you and see you next time. Bye.